What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Dane Inter channel and episode six of Project Grand Fury. In this video, I was simply going to change the front brake pads, but it's always something with me in this channel and it turned into a bigger job than I was expecting. Enjoy the video. All right, let's go after these brake pads. I'm gonna depress the caliper real quick using my C-clamp. That way we can get the caliper off easier. And remove this half inch bolt for this retainer. I'm using my Quality Dynamic Tools tool set for this job. If you're interested in a set like this for yourself, check out shopdynamictools.com. Use code DANINATOR15. In fact, use that code every time you order and you'll save 15% every time. Shopdynamictools.com, use code DANINATOR15. And down here as well. Okay, yeah, these pads were getting pretty low. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot left of these. Right, the pads I got are these Raybestos pads. There's the part number, MGD84M. All right, just comparing these, these are a match. That's good. Definitely a lot of meat on these pads. I may have to compress the piston just a little bit further. All right, so I compress that caliper down as far as it'll go. So now these fresh pads will fit. Just gonna put a little bit of this brake lubricant on the ears of this thing just so it has something to slide on. Put way too much on there, so that's perfect. Oh, here we go. want to slide on to this thing. I think I've got that caliper as far back as it'll go. I think I do. Well, what's going on here? Okay, so we got the caliper back on with the brakes. They were pretty snug. I end up popping the little pieces of metal that go on the back of the brakes just so I can get the caliper on there. Now that it's on there, it's it's kind of snug. So they'll just have to self-tolerance. On to the next wheel. So I forgot to hit the record button, but I got the new pads in, put the caliper back on. I'm gonna use my Dynamic Tools flexible torque wrench. It's a half inch. 30 foot pounds up to 250 foot pounds. I'm gonna tighten these lug nuts to 85 foot pounds. If you wanna pick up one of these high quality torque wrenches for yourself, visit shopdynamictools.com. Again, use code DANINATOR15, save 15% off your order. So I've got the fresh set of pads on here and I just backed up back and forth, back and forth, probably four or five times. And I just noticed that every time I would back up, or pull forward, I wouldn't even hit the brake and the car would come to a stop. I cannot roll that tire. The caliper is stuck. Same on this side. Cannot roll that tire. Even though it's up off the ground, it should roll with no effort. Those calipers are locked up. So that ain't good. Something else to figure out. <laughs> it's always something. All right, so it's been a little over 24 hours. I want to try something. If you remember, these tires would not roll. Let's see if it's let up at all. Nope, it's still stuck. Yep. Same with that side. Hmm. So it's been yet another 24 hours. It's been 48 hours since we parked the car. 
I still cannot turn the wheel. I was kind of hoping that perhaps the soft brake line from this caliper to the hard line might be collapsed or something and it's slowly leaking back into the master cylinder. That doesn't seem to be the case. So what we're gonna do is pull the tire off. I've got some new brake line coming. I have ordered a rebuild kit for the calipers and I even bought two new pistons for the calipers. I'm hoping that the bore of the caliper itself isn't damaged or corroded or anything. Uh, Cause then I'd be buying new calipers anyway. So anyway, let's get these wheels off. I'm gonna try bleeding this caliper. I wanna let loose that bleeder screw and see what happens with the fluid. Okay, let's see what happens with this bleeder screw. Well, that is bizarre. There is absolutely nothing coming out. And that bleeder screw, I don't know, looks a little crusty. How bizarre. There's nothing even dripping out of there. Hmm. Okay, so I got my brake bleeding tool, which is basically a jug with a hose that is submerged in fluid so that no air can go back in after you pump the brakes and uh, see if I can get any fluid to come out. go that's some old crusty nasty looking fluid I'm going to top off the reservoir right here make sure I don't run that dry do that with some fresh fluid basically that's how you flush a brake system is keep putting fresh in and pump out the old just keep pumping looks like there's quite a bit of air coming out I don't know if that's from around the tube on the bleeder nipple or if that's from the system. Don't know. Boy, that's some nasty looking fluid. So I know I'm getting fluid through the flex hose and through the bleeder screw. I'm beginning to think that maybe the piston is the problem. Uh, that is actually not a steel piston in there. That is what they call a phenelic or something like that. Phenelic. I can't remember. Anyway, it's a, like a hard plastic or like a resin. Uh, it resists heat and that kind of stuff, and it's pretty strong. If the coating on that gets brittle or flakes off or something over time, then that resin can actually kind of swell. And so I think that's probably what's taking place here in this caliper. And uh, we've got the piston kind of seizing into the bore, which probably isn't good for the bore of the caliper. But anyway, we're going to keep pumping this old fluid out. This is nasty. Okay, we're on the passenger side. Let's see if we can get any fluid to come out of here. Yep. All right, well, let's pump the brakes on this and see what we get. Boy, that stuff's almost black. It's supposed to be like the vanilla cream soda color. So I'm at the rear passenger side. This is the wheel furthest from the master cylinder. I've got the bleeder hose on the bleeder screw. I loosened it and no fluid came out, just like the driver's side front. So we'll pump the brakes. It's crucial to keep the master cylinder full of fluid. So I, I pump five or six times, check the reservoir, because this reservoir, it's not that big. One of the beauties of this bleeder tool is you don't have to take the wheels off. Case in point, this rear wheel. So let's pump a few times. This fluid's a little less brown. The guy that sold me the car told me that they had done rear brake work. So it kind of makes sense that the rear brake fluid looks cleaner. They must have bled the brakes and got some of that old fluid out of there. They didn't do any front brake work, that's for sure, because that fluid looked like a cola instead of like a cream soda. Okay, so this should be fairly clear, much like the passenger side. Okay, I'm hopping back over here on the passenger side front. We're going to pump this until we get some pretty clear looking fluid instead of that nasty coffee looking stuff. Still 
pretty brown. Alright, so I was just about ready to call it a night, and I was putting the wheels back on. Check this out. It's still really tight, but at least I can move it. And that's just from bleeding brakes. Interesting. Passenger side. Interesting. Alright, we are back with the Grand Fury. I've got a box of parts here that look like they came from 1987. These were wholesale closeout off of Rock Auto. What we're doing here is we're going to address the front brakes again. The driver's side wheel is still dragging. Passenger side wheel uh, spinning pretty decent now ever since I bled the brakes. We are going to be replacing the soft brake line to the caliper. I've got a uh, caliper rebuild kit, basically the seals, and I've got new pistons. And the interesting thing about these brand new, really old pistons is these are phenolic resin. Withstands heat, water, chemicals, and they're really strong. This is what came on the car, so I'm just replacing it with what came on the car. I think the issue that I'm having with my brake calipers is maybe it got cracked or nicked, and I believe the piston might be swelling a little bit and getting caught in the bore of the caliper. I think that could be what's happening. Did a little research on that particular style of piston, and that is something that can happen if the piston's really old. These look like they've been sitting on a shelf for decades. But anyway, we've got new seals, new pistons, new soft brake line, so that's what we're gonna be fixing tonight. So hopefully this fixes all the trouble I've been having with my front brakes, and I can get this car back on the road and start driving again. It's a lot of fun to drive. Not so fun when it's just sitting in your driveway for weeks on end. These have got to be probably the easiest calipers to remove on a vehicle I've ever owned. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have my daughter go into the car and push the brake pedal and we'll have this piston hopefully come out. And once it pops out, I need to clamp off this soft line right here with a uh, set of grip-on pliers that I got from Dynamic Tools and uh, keep the brake fluid from continuing to flow towards the caliper. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna spill some brake fluid doing this. I've actually never rebuilt a caliper before. Seems like it's a pretty straightforward process. Okay, girly, go ahead and start pushing. You can see it's starting to move. Pretty sure I damaged the seal whenever I was compressing this to get the brake pads on because there's brake fluid all around here. Here we go. It's just about ready to pop out. Okay. Well, you can see how loose it is. It just won't come off. Why is that? Seems to be the problem. Whoa. I just spilled a lot of brake fluid. Like a lot. Yeah, there's some gunk down in there. Okay, so this fluid looks really gross. Look at the crud down in there. This is what happens when you don't change your brake fluid very often. It's just like pretty nasty stuff. You can see the gunk buildup. Pretty gross. So my next step is I'm going to clean that bore out. Pretty nasty in there. See down in there there's quite a bit of trash. Just a big bunch of clobs of junk in there. It's no wonder these pistons didn't want to move. 
There's a seal down in here, like a square shaped seal. gunk all over it. Ain't supposed to look like that. Okay, I've got a little thin screwdriver underneath this lip here. I believe. Yep, that's how you get that off of there. It's got a hard piece of metal in there that presses to the face of that caliper bore. Let's get this thing cleaned up. It's like mud in there. Man, it's gritty. It's literally gritty in there. Nasty. Well, as much as I'd like to think that this will clean up and be reusable, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy a new caliper. There's a ton of corrosion right there. I can definitely feel it when I rub my finger across it. I mean, I could probably put a wire wheel down in there. I mean, these calipers remanufactured are like 25, 30 bucks a piece. I'm just not comfortable enough with that amount of corrosion down in that thing to reuse this. Shoot. Well, I was hoping I could get through this on the cheap route and just spend about 10 or 15 bucks. I mean, really, that's all I had in this thing. New pistons were like two dollars the seals were like 75 cents i mean i was less than 20 bucks to rebuild these calipers and that was including the brake lines and i might as well just get a new one for the other side I'll go online and order these parts okay so we're back at the grand fury's brake repair and my parts finally came in ended up with some raybestos frc 4107 and 4108 yeah that looks about right. Bleeder screw. Hopefully they gave me hardware. I'm gonna need a new brass crush washer. All new seals, new piston. It looks like it's one of those resin pistons. That's that one. Interesting. This one is a steel piston. Wild, okay. Brass washers, that's good. And the new hardware. Looks like everything matches. If you're confused which caliper goes on which side, bleeder screw is always towards the top. So the hardware I've got is two new brass crush washers, new banjo bolt, and the hardware that holds the caliper in place. Looks like there's some rubber seal or something, and then some bolts for the new hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the caliper on first and then replace the rubber brake line. I've got this brake line crushed closed, so I'm not leaking brake fluid all over my patio. The hardware has these little gaskets. I do not know where these gaskets go. If you happen to know where these go, let me know in the comment section below because I'm at a loss. I, I don't know. So now I'm gonna go after this flexible brake line. Again, we're going with Raybestos. This thing looks like it's been on the shelf since 1987. Nasty. I suppose I'll get a wire brush or something and clean that up, but it's looking pretty gross. To get this flexible line off, I need to use my 3 8 wrench and loosen that fitting right there. And we'll pop that thing off. Before I go to spilling a bunch of brake fluid out, I need to make sure the reservoir is full, which I'm pretty sure it is because I topped it off the last time I was messing with this. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get the banjo bolt and the crush washers ready so I can thread this thing in as soon as it's ready. Okay, I took the caliper off real quick because I wanted to go ahead and put the banjo bolt on here and it felt like it was starting to cross thread. So I was looking at the threads on this thing and they looked a little gommed up right here at the very top. And I thought, this is not going to be good, but it's threading in fine. It just was not going in straight or something whenever I was trying to do it down here and I was getting upset. There we go. Much or better. That's an 11 millimeter. 
tighten that down just kind of snug for the moment. I'll slap all this hardware back in. Nothing like doing something twice because it's my favorite for 13 millimeter. Okay, take two on the brake line. That is a really long bolt. Forgot to remove the lock. I'm gonna go ahead and try to start the threads on this thing. So I've got it to thread and it's taking, so that's good. I'll go ahead and throw this lock down in here. Okay. okay I'll just throw a little brake clean on that, get this brake fluid off of the paint. This stuff is corrosive. All right, it is all installed and tightened down. So we're ready to put some brake fluid in this thing. We'll pump the brakes and then we'll bleed it and get all the air out of this caliper. So we've got good fluid level right now, but that's gonna drop once we start pumping brakes. Okay, I've got my daughter in there. She's going to be pushing the brakes. We're gonna see hopefully all kinds of air come out of this. Go ahead. It's nice and clean too. That's not that nasty, very nearly black coffee looking liquid. So we got quite a bit of air coming out. We're gonna wait for all this to turn completely solid fluid. I'm gonna check the reservoir. So our fluid level went way down. I definitely do not want this to go empty because then I'd be bleeding a master cylinder and I don't want to do that. So that took quite a bit of fluid. So that's looking good. That's pretty solid. I don't see any more air. Okay, that's good. So moment of truth, we got the new caliper on and it's been bled. Will the wheel move now? Nice. So this caliper is working like it should and is not sticking. Okay, so I just got done with the passenger side. I set my camera up to do a time lapse of this and I didn't realize that I put it on slow motion and just absolutely filled up all the memory on my phone. So you didn't get to see me do this, but new calipers on, new hardware, new flex hose. When I pulled the old hose off of the old caliper, just nothing but brown, nasty, gunky fluid came out of this thing. So everything's been replaced, tightened down, bled, the wheel spins freely. Okay, go ahead. Brake works. Okay, let go. There we are. Perfect. Functioning brakes. You gotta love it. All right, so I'm gonna back this thing up off the patio, go back and forth a few times, and uh, test these brakes out before I go down my big hill. Almost didn't make it up last time when that front driver's side was locking up. Okay, what I'm noticing so far in the driveway is my brake pedal has a lot more throw to it before the rear brakes catch. If you remember, those front, those rear brakes caught like 
that i mean they were just so touchy but now that my front brakes are working they don't seem to be catching near as hard so i've got the pedal down a lot further than i was used to pushing it because of how tight the rear brakes were so interesting went down the driveway no problem came to a stop that's good and i'm rolling and it doesn't feel like there's any bind the car's not pulling hard left or right so my calipers are not sticking so that's fantastic so thank goodness we got the brakes fixed 